I know it's really bad, 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 bad Missing with my head, 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 head We drive each other mad, 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 mad But baby, that's what makes us good in bed Oh, by the way, I use my compression That you got the answers to my confessions It's like I'm powerful with a little bit of tender An emotional sexual bender Mess me up, yeah, but no one does it better There's nothing better That's just the way you make me feel Okay, so now that I've played the songs with, at the microtones, I can do a little bit of an explanation of each one. Um, so, these are uh, pop songs that split uh, a pretty much normal 12 tone interval into different sizes to approach uh, something, which is a really important technique in microtonal ear training. Uh, one of the first things you can do is to split targets that you already know. And these don't have to be quarter tones, but they can. So the first one we're going to talk about here is uh, Dua Lipa's uh, Good in Bed, which, you know, it's a really, really catchy pop song. The chord cycle is G minor, C, F, D7. So it kind of leads back to there. Sounds a little bit like it's an F, even though the chord cycle sounds on G minor. So it's pretty cool. So the microtonal part happens right when we get to the chorus, actually. Um, right about here. I'm always... I know it's really bad, 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 bad. It's that part that goes, I know it's really bad, 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 bad. And it's been theorized that this splits a minor third into five, but I sometimes hear it as a major second. It's a very interesting phenomenon because what happens is, like, if you were to play it, right, you know, I thought, uh, shoot, what are the words? Let's see. Um, I'm not even going to edit that out. I don't even care. I know it's really bad, 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 bad. So you'd probably sing out like bad 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 ba da 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 Right? You could sing that kind of as a D and it really fits with I think what the chord progression is trying to convey. And the first note of that progression also doesn't clash with the chord, right? Da 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 Right? You're going from here to here, but this note starts higher than a D maybe. Because like, here, watch what happens when I pause it right on that bad word. You'll hear that the lingering pitch is just like so much higher than this D, even though you can perceive the pitch as a D because it fits in the chords way better. Okay. I know 
know it's really bad. Bad. Kind of up here, right? But it doesn't sound like that pitch. Like if I play it like this, I say it's really bad. Bad, 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 bad. Like this doesn't sound like it's part of that chord, right? See, this isn't what's going on here, right? It's only more like this going to here, but this pitch gets so high that it can sound like it's sort of like this one. So maybe you could even say that this is kind of a large, like a large-ish D that's really encroaching on E flat a lot of the time and doesn't reach it or go past it until the very end of the pitch so that you perceive it as kind of starting on this one. There's a lot of arguments you could have about it that are really interesting. And pausing the video definitely gives you that perspective where you're just like, oh man, this pitch is a lot higher than I thought. It's more like here. But when I picture this melody coming in, I say it's really bad. I don't picture this note. I say it's really bad. Maybe it's like in between here. I say it's really bad, 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 bad. Da -da 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 -da. Da -da -da. You know, it's like it's up here. Something's happening. So. It might not be precise even, you know? It might just be something that's found by ear. But anyway, it's really cool that um, they didn't uh, tune that out with auto-tune and that it's a, a microtonal feature of the chord progression. Uh, either that D going down to C or that uh, sort of D half-sharpish thing going down to C. So, yeah, that's one. Okay, let's look at the next one. Um, this is a Spoon's Do You. Um, and the main chord cycle is like an E major 7 and then maybe an A. I think it might have the major something in it, I don't know. But there's that E. Those are where the microtones are, is you have this little background line that goes... It's cool rhythm too. And then when it goes back up to this note... This note from F sharp to G sharp, instead of being split in half, is split into thirds. So, um, that's also really interesting because that's kind of like, you know, you're using that passing tone to get back to that note. And then when you get back to it, you're on the A major 7 chord instead. And this little microtonal line can be sung on both of the chords. Do, 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 do. because I'm splitting this into thirds. Um, so that's what happens there, and that is kind of, it's really funny because those are microtones, but they're also very background. So that's a background part. It's not a feature of the melody like the Dua Lipa song. So really, really different roles for both of these. In fact, I think it would be a lot easier to get by in the Spoon song without catching the microtones since they're in the background, and they also form slightly dissonant parts of the chord, right? You know, like the G sharp in the A major 7 chord. Okay, moving on. Now we've got uh, Janelle Monae's That's Just The Way You Make Me Feel, which is this awesome bop that totally slaps an F-sharp mixolydian. Um, and then what happens here, here's this part again. Um, I think it's, you could call this the pre-chorus. It's like I'm powerful with a little bit of tender and emotion, no sexual bender. Those, that's where this happens. For the longest time, I thought this note I thought that was like an F sharp, but I think it's actually down here, like the seventh of the chord, you know? Da, 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 da. Right? You hear how the, she's singing the in-between notes? Da, 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 da. Right? So those notes aren't on the piano, of course. So you could probably, um, you could play that in, in quarter tones, actually, um, unlike the other ones. So that's pretty interesting. But yeah, I just think that part is so awesome. Uh, okay, neat. And now, uh, our last one here, uh, well, actually, no. I should mention that in the Janelle Monáe song, I forgot to mention how the destination is split up. So I guess if you have that's splitting up a major second into four parts. From E sharp to D sharp, you've got these extra notes in between, so four instead of two. So yeah, you can do that in quarter tones. Okay, that's the only thing I forgot. All right, so in the in these boots are made for walking. This is really interesting because um, Kite Gadridis originally told me about this one, and I like there's the Nancy Sinatra version, right? 
and then there's the Jessica Simpson version, and they both use the microtones, and I really would have thought that, like, in the Jessica Simpson version, since it's all, like, poppy and probably more recent, that they would have sanitized the microtones out of it, you know, uh, like, you know, whitewashing the microtones out of everything happens all the time, but, um, but they kept it in there, which was really surprising, and I also, uh, misjudged it a little bit. Perhaps, uh, as I had done with the Dua Lipa originally, when I thought that a major second was being divided, when it's really more like a largish major second, or even a minor third, um, I, the first time I heard this, I thought that the quarter tones were going down to a perfect fourth, but I think what happens is descending tones are going all the way down to uh, a minor sixth below the original note, and then that original note jumps back down to the root. So... <laughs> Like, in, in the Jessica um, Simpson version, is in F-sharp. So the bass line, I think, is roughly like... No, that's not right. Let's listen to it again. Did you hear that? That last note was the major third going back down. Let's listen to it again. I'll play the major third as we get there this time. Are you ready, boats? Start walking. Right? So this is really cool, because this split is really, really complicated if it's an equal split. It's like you've got a minor sixth, and you're probably splitting at... Splitting it, I guess, into, well, maybe, da, 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 da. that's splitting a thing into three, and you did that four times. So I guess a minor six is split into 12 parts, but maybe my math is really bad. What's really funny is, um, there's no chords there, right? But wait, there's more. Okay, so here's the, the Nancy Sinatra version, which does the same crawl down. We can't play it on the piano, though, since it's in the crack. I'm not going to bother retuning it, I don't care. So... Do, 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 do. Maybe a bit sharp of a major third, but I think it's aiming for that major third, so, uh, yeah. That's really interesting. I think since the one that in the Nancy Sinatra version is a bit sharp, um, then I thought it was approaching that perfect fourth from the root instead of the major third from the root. Um, but yeah, okay. So in the Nancy Sinatra version, uh, the microtones are just used incidentally in between. Like, see how, like, in the intro it happened here, and then over here I think it happens again. And now some these boots, boots. That's a major third. Now, I think that's the only way they're used in this version. But, crazily enough, the Jessica Simpson version has the microtones in parts that have chords in it. And so the fact that it's approaching that minor sixth below the root, which turns into the major third, you know, above the root that's down below, is really, really cool because you still kind of get the effect of microtones, but since they're approaching something and it eventually hits a tonic really hard, that effect is greatly mitigated since it's temporary. So here's, I think, where it happens here. Um, let's see, right here. Walk all over you. So see, right there, uh, we just went down and there was a violin playing, and then I think there's another part where uh, there's like more instruments happening. So yeah, that might be right here. Just listen very carefully to that microtonal descending line bit by bit through all the instruments. Here, I'll try, I'll try and hum it along because it's a little bit hard to hear, but you can still hear, like, the characteristic twang of it. It's very low in the mix compared to the other instruments that are mostly playing, like, an F-sharp major chord. So here, I'll try and hum it with you. Or hum it with me, or whatever. You can hum it with me. So yeah, hopefully that was a really uh, fun and educational look into how pop songs 
split up uh, intervals from 12 to an equal temperament differently to get microtones. Now, there are a couple reasons that this is a really important thing to talk about and a really good strategy. Um, it's a really good strategy because it doesn't require someone to have extensive knowledge of tuning systems or construct new instruments or learn new techniques, really. As long as you have a fretless instrument and you've got a musical ear and you've been practicing, uh, you really can just make it happen. Uh, and. You know, th this thing in these boots are made for walking might be like some complex tuning where we figured out how to divide this number just right, but that's not anything these musicians were thinking about, and they don't have to, which means that the music gets made faster, uh, I think. So th I think that's a great thing, um, that it can be done without that sort of thing. Uh, and of course, another good reason to uh, look at it is because it can be used in ear training. Uh, it can be used to approach destinations. I mean, I'm sure like lots of you have seen the video where Jacob Collier divides a minor third into five. Um, so dividing small, dividing small intervals uh, into different parts is easier than dividing larger ones, because if you divide a larger one, you have more distance to travel, and uh, the destination you have to get to is also sort of harder to internalize, especially if the interval is really farther away, but uh, it's definitely, you know, it's a really good strategy to split up targets in microtonality. This also doesn't have to apply to targets that are from 12 to equal temperament. Once you learn a few other key intervals that are far outside of 12 equal, you can split those up as well. So there's just lots and lots of ways to do it. Uh, splitting up targets from 12 is really the way to start, I think, with doing lots of microtonal stuff. Um, another great reason to look at this is it provides some really cool uh, ways to use microtonality in pop songs that aren't just quarter tones. I mean, some of them can be put into quarter tones, like the Janelle Monáe example, um, even though I think maybe some people thought it was a minor third. Like, maybe I almost still think it is a little bit, because sometimes that pitch is sung a little high and stuff like that. Um, but you can tell that uh, the musicians are naturally being really expressive with it and bringing it into their music uh, in this way. Oh, and the last thing I want to mention about this, I think, is that these kinds of approaches prove that using microtonality is a really good tool uh, if you want to accomplish uh, certain intervallic effects in your song, and you don't even really have to do a lot of complex things outside of 12 ton equal temperament to get those little moments to happen. So, um, definitely experiment on your own with splitting up intervals differently, um, because it's really fun. So yeah. Okay, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If there are any other pop songs that have these kinds of characteristics where they split up a destination from 12 equal, uh, into different amounts of parts, I'd really like to know about it. I'd like to know what I missed. Uh, what I got wrong, and what your guys' recommendations are. So for more similar content, please uh, like and subscribe. I love talking about uh, pop music and music theory and microtonality in all of its forms and composition. So, yeah. Okay, see you guys later.